Great. So once again, good evening, everyone, and uh, welcome to the webinar today. And today's topic is understanding the U.S. debt ceiling and its impact on financial markets. Uh, the, the term has been uh, going around for uh, a few weeks now, and uh, today we are going to discuss about what this debt ceiling actually is and uh, what impact does it have on the financial markets. And before we begin, if you can hear me properly, if you can see the presentation, um, please use your chat options, which you will be later on using, uh, which you will be later on using also to ask any questions which you have in your mind. So uh, just use the chat options, say yes or okay, if you can hear me properly, if you can see the presentation. I'm keeping uh, the camera off because it, it affects the network apparently. So I want to make sure that everybody can hear me properly, right? And uh, if you have also any questions, you can ask while uh, we are doing this session. Um, also, by the end of the session, if you have any questions, do ask. So the uh, today, whatever we are going to discuss, these are views which are, uh, again, these views have been accumulated and a lot of research has been done on what the current market scenario is and historically uh, what it has been, the impact of debt ceiling. And on the basis of past experiences and uh, what is expected and, and what we understand, a few scenarios we are going to discuss and uh, please understand, as we know that uh, investments in um, uh, derivatives and uh, in any kind of products, there is always an element of risk which comes across. So today's uh, session is more about awareness and information to understand so that you can take your investment decisions more rationally once you understand what the situation is. So um, with that, let's try to understand what is this term debt ceiling actually is because it's it's been in the news Almost every day, uh, stocks remain mixed ahead of U.S. debt ceiling decision. Um, gold prices went up ahead of debt ceiling decision. So debt ceiling has been something which has been the core of every news now. And uh, it's not the first time. So today we're going to discuss how in the past uh, the, the debt ceiling issue has occurred and what has been the scenarios. So uh, let's try to understand what this debt ceiling actually is. So basically, U.S. debt ceiling, this is the limit on the amount of money the U.S. government can actually borrow to uh, pay for the services like military or defense or Medicare or social security. So what, what happens is it's basically the limit on the amount U.S. government can borrow money. Uh, it's, it, it's as simple as that. So debt ceiling limit, which means that the debt limit has reached to a ceiling, which means that is, there is a certain restriction, a restricted amount beyond which US government cannot borrow to pay for the services or to spend. So basically what happens is there is an amount of money which the government takes in the form of taxes. And sometimes uh, government ends up spending more than the amount they actually have and a deficit is created. And to fill that deficit, money is borrowed by issuing bonds to the people. Now the point is uh, when uh, these bonds are issued, people basically loan it to the US government, but then there is a limit which has been decided by the US lawmakers that to this limit only you can borrow money or issue bonds. Beyond that, you are not allowed to do it. So that limit is called debt ceiling. Please let me know if uh, if my voice cracks or if there is any uh, issue on the network because I just want to make sure that everybody understands every segment of the presentation clearly. Either way, we are going to keep the put the recording of the session on YouTube so you can always revisit this. So basically, uh, as I said, the idea uh, about the U.S. debt ceiling is is the amount. Uh, which U.S. government can borrow. And every year, the government uh, takes, as I said, there's a lot of revenue which comes in the form of taxes, 
uh, custom duties, right? And then uh, this money is spent on projects, infrastructure. And uh, sometimes because more money is spent, the government is left with a deficit and that deficit can be ranging from 400 billion to three or four trillion dollars also. And this has happened over the last 10 years, over the last decade, if we see. And every year, the deficit which is left at the end of the year, that gets accumulated with the country's total debt. So, for example, if there is past year that the, the deficit was three billion or four billion, so that much borrowing happens or 100 billion or 200 billion. So this debt keeps getting accumulated to the country's total debt, right? Now, what happens is also we have to see, as I said, that the government uses how they borrow money is they issue US bonds. So for anyone who doesn't understand how bonds work, a bond with, with its literally name means promise, right? So a bond certificate is, which is also called a promissory note. It is issued by a government and uh, anybody who buys that note is basically lending money to the U.S. government in return of a fixed interest, which is paid by the government to the lender. And uh, that interest is called coupon, along with a promise that the money will be repaid after a specific, specific period of time, which is called the maturity of the bond. So a bond basically has uh, two, three features. One is who issues it. There can be a government, US government or an Indian government or a European government which issues these bonds. And the purpose of issuing these bonds is basically to borrow money from people so that that money can be used for further spending. And uh, in return of that, when uh, the government borrows money from people, they give interest over that just like any other uh, customer would do it to a bank. And also the government promises to pay that amount at a certain period of time. So if you're buying a five-year bond or a 10-year bond, what that basically means is that by the end of 10 years, this bond will get mature and you will get your money back from the government. And uh, until then, your since your money is being used until then, every year you get a certain thing called a fixed coupon or in, in a normal language, in a layman terms, uh, interest on your uh, money. Now, that way, uh, the government borrows money. There are institutions, there are hedge funds which buy U.S. government bonds and U.S. treasuries have, or, so U.S. government bonds are called U.S. treasuries and these treasuries or these bonds they have good ratings because at the end of the day, we are talking about U.S. government. So they have good ratings, right? So what happens is uh, U.S. government, they issue bonds, they pay back with the interest. But the point is once the, the government, when they hit this debt limit, then uh, the treasury cannot be issued. More bonds cannot be issued, right? So that stops the flow of money into the federal government. So hitting the debt ceiling means that now the U.S. government cannot borrow more money, which means they cannot issue any more bonds, right? And that's the problem because they have to pay people's money back. So if, if U.S. government basically gets defaulted, it's going to create a catastrophic uh, response across. So that's the reason that why everybody has been talking about this debt ceiling. Now, just to tell you, uh, as I said, uh, the current debt limit, what you see right now as it's, it's shown in the graph, the current debt limit stands at $31.4 trillion. Now, if you see, uh, if you can uh, read the slide, what, what we are discussing about, Congress is in charge of setting the debt limit. Now, that debt limit currently is $31.4 trillion. Since 1960, this debt limit, this debt ceiling, it has been increasing. It has raised, has been raised around 78 to 80 times. And this has happened under both the presidents. So right now in US, there is a Democrat president, Joe Biden. Uh, four years ago, there was Donald Trump. Years ago, there was Ronald Reagan or Barack Obama or George Bush. So under both the presidencies, the debt limits, the debt ceilings have been increased. 
and when i say the debt ceiling has been increased or raised that means that the us lawmakers they reach to a conclusion and say okay we will increase the debt ceiling to 31 trillion dollars which means you can borrow another xyz amount so from here if the debt ceiling is increased to 50 trillion dollars which means for the next few years us government is allowed to borrow 20 trillion more in case of deficits so raising there can be two consequences with the debt ceiling one is that the debt ceiling is not raised which means the us declares bankruptcy as a government which will have a catastrophic effect on the economy second is that the us debt ceiling is raised which basically will contribute to a high inflation and especially right now where we are the inflation is already too high but then obviously anything better than the us government getting defaulted so right now the assumptions of the markets are more towards the fact that the debt ceiling will be raised but then because the inflation is already high there is a lot of speculation around whether or not the debt ceiling be raised and what happens if us gets defaulted and that's why we are doing this session because this is important what happens if the us defaults because us has never defaulted on its payments before and that's why the rating of the us bonds is higher right so nobody knows it's very unclear that, that what's going to happen if us actually declares bankruptcy obviously it's not likely to be good because at the end of the day as janet yellen said that if there is any failure to meet the government's obligation that would cause a lot of harm to the economy right a lot of people a lot of americans who who earn livelihood and who have have government bonds if they they get defaulted on it then there is uh, there's going to be a big big impact and there could be a big recession so basically it's not going to be stable anymore if us gets defaulted a lot of investors uh, will lose faith in us dollar right the economy will get weaker job cuts will happen unemployment will uh, begin and again as i said the mortgage rates because the us government it will have absolutely no other means to continue any services right so the mortgage rates would also start increasing and the housing market will tank so basically catastrophic effects if the debt ceiling is not raised and if us gets defaulted we are looking at a, a weaker dollar a weaker economy a high unemployment rate high mortgage rates impacting housing markets and everybody getting defaulted so that is the fear which is currently going on in the market obviously if now moving on to other part why the us debt is actually so high because that's that's a very important thing uh, why the debt is around 31.4 trillion dollars what is the reason why it has been happening and there is and it's a very very important thing because uh when the us debt like it basically grows when government is spending more money right when the revenue is lower when it is uh, basically spending more money now if you see uh, in last uh, 30 years if we see uh, from 1980 to 22 for basically 40 42 years if you see throughout this entire history we have seen that us had at least some amount of that debt which was there but in 1980s actually the debt really started to grow because that was the time when ronald reagan was the president and he introduced these huge tax cuts and because there was not much tax revenue the government needed to borrow more money to spend and then in the 90s there was cold war which again allowed the government to cut back on defense spending right so basically what happened was a booming economy uh, led to a higher tax revenue that was in 1990s but then in 2000s we saw a recession coming in the dot com bubble burst and a recession happened so at uh, during that time between 2001 to 2003 george bush had to cut tax twice and that was a time when military campaigns were going on in iraq and afghanistan and that time the defense spending was way higher even if you see higher as i as 6 trillion dollars so that started the crushing debt right because war spending was too high but because recession happened so george bush had to cut the taxes also now taxes being cut not revenue uh coming in but higher defense spending as high as 6 trillion dollars actually again is started the crushing debt 
2008 again recession happened and we saw that government had to do a lot of bailout to the banks as we all know the great housing crisis and again the unemployment rate that time it hit 10% so after that when the recovery started happening in 2017 again donald trump when he became the president there was a major tax cut and that time the debt increased by 7 trillion dollars while he was in the office and then we all know that how pandemic happened and government passed the us government passed a series of stimulus and that was around 5 trillion dollars so we have seen that how this debt has actually continued to go higher it started with ronald reagan in, in 80s introducing tax cuts moved to 90 uh, we saw tax revenues coming in but then in 2000 again the dot com bubble happened recession happened so george bush had to cut taxes uh, so between 2001 to 2003 we saw tax cuts but we also saw a lot of spending on military uh, by george bush because the ongoing campaigns were going on in uh, war campaigns in iraq and afghanistan and then in 2008 again the recession happened the housing crisis where the major banks had to be bailed out and then fast forward in 2017 again donald trump had to do tax cuts that increased the debt by 7 trillion dollars so now where we stand us debt is around 31 trillion dollars and that's where we stand at the moment and let's understand that where these payments go because that is also important that debt now we realize that due to tax cuts we saw debt getting higher but where this money actually goes where the federal government is actually spending this money is also very important for us to understand because at the end of the day uh the gum the the this money goes to uh, different different uh, areas so if i say like for example uh, payments for social security so let's say for example if we are looking at uh, uh, payments to individuals at this point any sort of tax refunds or any sort of uh, payments done to social security or for the medicals or for the veterans then if you see a payment to the states now the federal government has a lot of bills to pay uh, and this is something which is uh, really important they have a lot of bills to pay now you talk about payments to social security or veterans or tax refunds but they also have to run the government right they also have to pay for federal workers salary they have to pay for operating expenses benefits and then they also have to pay uh, interest on the bonds which they have already issued so the money which they have borrowed they have to pay interest also on it right and then of course the defense budget for us is extremely high so they have to pay salaries of the militants the payments the um, uh, the aerospace and defense equipments they buy so that is something again and then unemployment benefits this is where basically the money goes and that is the reason why so now you know what actually the debt ceiling is now you know that why the debt has been so high we have seen from 1980s to 2022 last 40 42 years what has been the reason and then where the money is being spent uh, uh, by the government you pay for the social security you pay for the medicare you pay for the tax refunds and then running the government requires money national defense budget and then payment to the states right now going back to the history if you see this chart let's try to understand what has happened in the past when this debt ceiling rim limit has reached because this is also something really important right we have to understand the historical uh, pattern also that how in the past uh, things have moved on basically what you see in this chart x date in the middle the x date is actually the date which is the closest estimate to when the government would uh, deplete all extraordinary measures in funding including servicing debt so basically the x date is the date where the government is expected to get default if the debt limit is not increased by the us lawmakers right and that that date is not really defined as per janet yellen it is around 1st of uh, june and that's why with every day passing the uh, limits and um, the 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 movement on the market 
it continues to be more and more volatile because this X date is told to be 1st of June. Now, uh, if we see in the past debt crisis, most of the cases, stocks have gained both the times before and after a debt ceiling crisis was resolved. 2011 was unusually volatile. But if you see three months before the X date, three months after the X date, the stocks have actually gone up. If you see 85, if you see 2015 or 1996, 2017, 2011, 2018, all of these years, we have seen mostly that three months before the debt ceiling issue, stocks have gone up. But then three months after, uh, also the stocks have gone up. And 2011, the orange line, which you see in the middle, 2011 uh, was very, very volatile. You see the volatility right now, uh, the cumulative return of S&P index. The, 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 on the left, you see the S&P index. The orange line is the movement of the S&P index. And you see that how volatile just before the debt ceiling uh, date, we saw uh, it going down sharply and then again started going up. Right, so 2011 has was uh, something which was uh, uh, very close, so if, and and this this is something which uh, we have to understand because a lot of times we have to do a historical analysis of uh, what has happened back in the past, and this is a debate which always happens. Um, and in in 2011, uh, if you see, uh, you will realize that it was very close. Uh, the U.S. default date and everybody was thinking that they will get defaulted. But then at the very end, we saw the lawmakers reaching uh, to a conclusion. So it's it's important to see that how uh, historically uh, the debt ceiling has been treated. So as you see that it can be really volatile every single year. And uh, if if you see 2021, for example, there was a debt ceiling suspension that was put in place that it's going to be suspended, which means, and, and that happened uh, under the Budget Act, but it expired. And that means that, again, the debt ceiling was reached. So the debt on in 2021 was around $28 trillion. In 2021, uh, the ceiling was raised by $2.5 trillion, which was $31 trillion, the, the current limit. And then again, it has been reached. So the, over a period of years, we have seen uh, that we have always in U.S. we have seen that the U.S. has never defaulted before and the debt ceiling has always been raised. Uh, in 2011, the discussion was too close and we saw a lot of volatility happening. And that is the reason that if the discussion is too close this time also, and if they take too much time to raise the limit, it could rattle the markets. And that's why we are having... Uh, the session today just to keep the investors informed because it's really important guys be ready for a lot of volatility in the coming few days because the first june is the x date where us gets defaulted and as the date closes and if there is no deal between the lawmakers then the markets will continue to rattle and if the decision comes in the very last minute which we have seen in the past it always happens then you will see the stocks again moving higher. So we should be ready for both the scenarios. So let's understand uh, what happens if the US defaults on its debt. Now this is the worst case scenario, but then uh, we should always consider uh, both the areas because uh, so there's a question, will this be a good time to invest in stocks? So we are going to discuss about what sectors of stocks will be good to invest in. Because there are particular sectors which can get, get get benefited either way, whether the U.S. gets defaulted or not. So we should be ready to, uh, you know, put our portfolio. Diversification is the key at the end of the day. So let's take scenario one. What happens if the U.S. gets defaulted on its debt? And what will the scenarios? First of all, the dollar could lose its value significantly. A lot of times we have seen that dollar uh, has that... Uh, um, reputation of being a safe heaven, which means whenever there's an uncertainty, uh, investors would buy dollars and keep it. And I'm sure a lot of people here right now um, still agree with the fact that dollar and gold, these few uh, instruments are a sort of 
a safe haven a lot of people would keep dollar deposits just in case if there was a global uncertainty but then if this happens if us gets defaulted then we are looking at uh, a possible drop in the dollar value and this is this is really important because uh, us dollar is one of the most uh, important currencies what we have seen and uh, a lot of times we have seen that uh, 85% of the global transactions uh, what happens it happens in dollars so us dollar uh, if there is if the debt ceiling is not raised how the dollar will be impacted uh, that is something which which we should definitely consider because if you are holding dollars right now see in 2011 we saw the us it reached to a point where the default was very close right and as much delay the the congress did and the lawmakers did in raising the debt ceiling it led to the very first downgrade in the us credit rating it was a very sharp drop in the stock markets the borrowing costs were increased because uh, the negotiations went on to the last right in 2013 also uh, we have seen that when the ceiling was reached again uh, there were extraordinary measures taken to delay the default uh, a lot of uh, individual retirement funds were not uh, the any uh, investments in those funds was not happening postal services benefit funds no investments were happening so if if we see right now uh, if again at this point of time if the default happens the probability of it is important is the probability high or low that's that's the question so if the because the limit has been hit and if it is not raised then the interest payments to the current bond holders will not happen the us will get default the credit the bond ratings of us will go down which will increase basically the cost of the debt because now they don't have the same reputation right and then when the limit has been hit now this point of time uh, the bond payments will also get delayed because now the us government cannot borrow any money right they will have to use extraordinary measures and extraordinary measures could be any it could be like uh, uh, cutting down on a lot of government investments right so that the previous bond payments can be made what do you normally do if you have borrowed money from someone you have to pay them back or you have to pay them interest uh, either you earn an income and do it or you borrow money from someone else and do it but if your income is not sufficient and you cannot borrow any money how would you pay back or how would you pay interest on your current borrowings you are going to either uh, divest your money from somewhere or you will Uh, try to uh, cut down or take your sell your land or take out your investments from somewhere to pay that bill so the idea is this is something which is which is really important and uh, it can impact uh, the us bonds and the dollar also because the credit worthiness of the bond is 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 really important right and so does the dollar because in last 10 years if we see the momentum how dollar has actually performed uh, dollar has still continued to increase on an average if you see last 10 years dollar has actually gone up by 2.5% just a month before the debt ceiling is raised right and if you see that comparison a month before the debt ceiling and the month after the debt ceiling an average return of 2.5% is what we have seen in the dollar but then again in the current scenario we can always see the historic trends right if if by the first june us actually hits the debt ceiling then we might see uh, if the debt ceiling is raised then we might see in another two months dollar getting more stronger but if it doesn't happen then we see that dollar will lose uh, the strength in its value so this this is one of the most important things we have to consider because uh, so far right now dollar has been one of the most important uh, currency in our understanding second is interest rates in us uh, that could rise sharply right because again uh, it's it's important because we have to understand the interest rates 
uh, will start getting higher if the debt ceiling is not raised and if because the us bonds will get defaulted and uh, the credit ratings will suffer a lot so that is also something uh, which is which is going to impact and um, it's it's not going to be uh, a good sign because if mortgage rates increase if the borrowing rates increase then uh, we are almost closer to another housing crisis right because a lot of uh, people who have already continued mortgages they will get default because they won't be able to pay interest so these are the things which we have to understand guys uh, this is everything is very much uh, connected to each other and uh, that is also another reason that why we need to have both the scenarios that in case of the debt limit is uh, raised or in the case when it is not raised right now moving on to the other part uh, also what happens to uh, the equity market somebody just asked that is it going to be a, a good time to enter into stock market so equity markets could significantly decline it's going to be a bearish market if us gets defaulted there is no other way around because if that happens uh, the it's basically us getting defaulted there is no other way a uh, stock markets could survive right so i think it's definitely going to be a bear market for equities and then also in the future it will be very difficult to evaluate other products because right now how uh, investment is evaluated currently when i speak with the clients they say invest into a us i'll get 5% so if you are offering me any product you have to understand that investing in a us bond is almost uh, you know risk free so if by buying a us bond i'm getting 5% on what basis i should buy this particular stock how much return i will get so basically every return and risk is compared by uh, putting us bonds in the center right uh okay so another thing eventually are eventually is another question is eventually are they bound to recover so it depends if if us government gets default the first thing which we will see in the stocks is a very sharp decline and if interest rates go up then tech stocks will suffer even more so we have to be very careful i mean i don't think this will be the right thing to do if the debt limit is not raised i think stocks we should be away from uh idea is to be more closer to the commodities because gold uh, and other commodities uh, because if 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 the debt ceiling uh, either way is raised or not we are seeing gold as a safe haven it has been up around 2000 dollars already so i think try to invest into funds which have exposure in gold or gold mining companies for that matter so if in case of a us default on its debt i think the best bet for any investor is gold and other commodities because that might rally and uh, other credit markets also will face severe repercussions so not just us bonds other bonds around the world also will have the same issue so i think it will be more um, rational if you continue to invest into commodities in case if the us defaults on its debt uh, last but not the least let's prepare right so and then there is another scenario what happens if the debt ceiling is actually raised so either way gold will be the safe haven in either cases but let's say if the debt ceiling is raised and uh, that is something which is uh, most likely the scenario because time is already running out for joe biden and congress to reach a deal to raise the debt ceiling right but then uh, everybody is worried about what's going to happen and uh, if if we see uh, you know in a in a very broader perspective we have seen that at the end us never gets defaulted and they reach to a certain deal right so first and foremost let's be very clear i mean it's worth bearing in your mind that the most likely outcome is a last minute deal to raise the debt ceiling now if we do that i mean us continues to get very very close to the line and very close to the deadline so just to make sure you know that you have both your scenarios covered uh let's see what what we can actually uh, look into so let's try to start with what happens if the debt ceiling is reached 
because first thing is what happens is once the debt ceiling is reached uh, we see a lot of defense companies and arms and ammunition companies they stand to benefit because government may need to increase defense spending as a result of the debt ceiling issue right so we see i mean it's it's just like basically if you're a glass half full investor and if you want to seize this opportunity it doesn't matter what happens to the stock market as somebody asked that will they ever recover you can still play around the debt ceiling crisis right so uh, let's look at few areas which can still get benefited so there are there is a fund called iShares US Aerospace and Defense ETF and it's one of the largest defense uh, fund it's, it's a exchange traded fund around 5 billion dollars and it mostly allows you to take exposure to us companies that basically manufacture aircrafts military aircrafts defense hardware all those other things right and uh, their expense ratio is less uh, obviously the total if you see the total return also last year i think it will be around 15% um in if you see last month the performance has been mostly down around 4 5% but then again uh, if uh, the the debt ceiling is raised we might see a lot of uh, spending in in defense irrespective if the debt ceiling is not raised if the the debt debt limit is reached also then also the government has to spend on the defense part so the aerospace and defense sector is one which irrespectively can get benefited so you can put um i mean not saying buy it right away i mean as i said it is more of a awareness and informative session uh, so just read uh, more about how aerospace and defense sector could get benefited either way the next question is should we actually bet on banks which is something um, is also a very important part should we be betting on the banks so if you look at the financial services sector um if the deal is reaching and if the deal happens and if the debt ceiling issues finally ends with a rising debt limit that the debt limit for us is reached which means the government is going to borrow more and if government borrows more which means it's more profits for banks and other financial institutions right now in this you take out the regional banks because the regional banks have been the most blunder as of now whether it is signature bank or first republic or silicon valley you take away the regional banks from here uh, but because also regional banks have a lot of treasury bills so uh, a lot of hedge funds are getting away from regional banks uh, due to debt ceiling but the point is you can still stick to bigger quality banks like there are funds like finance select sector etf which is a 28 billion dollar worth fund and uh, you will see a lot of quality banks in it so you stick with the quality names if the debt ceiling is reached which means us will borrow more which will which means a higher interest rate for a, a higher interest income for a lot of banks but as i said be away from the regional banks continue with the more international banks right so that is one uh, uh, sorry that is the second one and uh, then again let's talk about treasuries what actually happens to the bonds because that is also something which is again a most important thing if we if we talk about bonds because uh, there are a lot of banks which are holding us bonds and there's a lot of the silicon valley bank issue was one of those issues right where they were having a lot of bond uh, in whatever deposits the depositors made in those banks bank invested those in bonds and when interest rates went up the value of bonds went down and when the depositors came back to withdraw their money the bank has to sell those bonds to repay that amount and eventually declared bankruptcy so banks hold a significant amounts of us treasury right and if a default happens now that could create a sharp decline in the value of all these assets right and because as i said this is what happened with silicon valley with first republic and with a lot of other banks so we have to understand that treasuries as of now may not be the best idea but if you have to look from a very long term perspective because in the longer term treasuries have been a sort of safe haven for the last resort 
So if you want to play a long term, then you know, we are looking at uh, bond funds twenty plus years, right? With with a lot, uh, the size of the fund has to be around thirty forty billion dollars. And if you're getting a dividend on it, like you know, we are to we are looking at a very long term bonds at this point. So I think that is one thing which you can look if you're looking at treasuries. And as I said, it's worth bearing the thought in your mind that eventually by the end of this. Uh, us will probably not get defaulted and there's a last minute deal which reaches to that point right and then uh, we see gold for example and let's say if we have to invest in stocks let's continue with the utilities because utility stocks are one of the very important safe havens and when the economy actually stumbles we have seen a lot of consumers <laughs> I mean, take this example, right? If you, if your economy gets drenched into recession, you may not buy a Range Rover or uh, any luxury iPhone, but then you will still continue to pay your electricity bills. You are not just going to switch off lights at your home, right? Or if you will not stop watching TV or just unplug the refrigerator, you are still going to use all those. So continue to invest into that sector because that is something which is really important. Utilities. Uh, wherever there is a lot of volatility a lot of investors they take uh, shed in the utility sector right and there are funds that it's not just one company if you see the utility selector select sector etf which is by spdr it's it's a really uh, big fund it's around 16 billion dollar worth in size and uh, average yield is around 3% so that's a fixed income uh, on on the fund also and then if you obviously the past year return has been around 1.6% negative but if you see the 10 year annual gain is around 9% if you see the 10 year performance so and fund has outperformed around 90 93% of its peers over the past 10 years so that is something which is which is good it's important so if there is a possible default you still continue to invest into utilities that will be more important and lastly as i said that gold will still continue to be a traditional safe haven because other precious metals they have been traditionally they have been viewed as safe haven instruments during any economic turmoil so if the debt ceiling is not raised government defaults on the debt then investors may turn to gold and other precious metals so if you want you can invest into spdr gold funds also these these gold funds around 60 billion dollar worth of funds so that is one way to take exposure in commodities without taking a direct exposure in gold or any other right so this is this is really important guys to be uh, connected to what's happening in the market and as i said that we have discussed some prospects today that what can eventually happen um a few questions here are other currencies going to benefit from us default as uh, usd declines in value so yeah i mean basically dollar is not going to be the center point of everything like most of the times it has been but then we should also remember that other currencies uh, are also uh, going through uh, a lot so if you see european central bank for example euro um, of lately europe and bank of england both have raised rates so we are seeing euro and pound slightly going up but then we should also understand that maybe temporarily with the dollar getting devalued other currencies might get a boost but then we should understand that other currencies also have a lot of risk uh, europe has a risk of russia in the being in the middle between russia and ukraine and an impending recession and uk is also very close to a impending recession so and and the bonds which will get affected if us government get defaulted we should not forget that it might have a trigger effect on the entire world so that's why i'm saying that the probability of that happening is slightly lower as the probability of the lawmakers reaching to a deal in the very last minute so i think it's fair to be more inclined towards uh, commodities and commodity based funds in case of stocks i think utility sector is something which you should mostly look at and um, if if you are expecting that the last minute deal will happen then financial services sector is also but only the quality names so since since the borrowing limit is increased um, the the us government will borrow more and it will be more of an interest income and then you can also look into arms and ammunitions defensive sector basically defense sector as i said 
aerospace and defense the spending from us government is going to be higher eventually so these are few sectors which you can look at this is how you should be prepared and at the end if you if you do margin trading if you take leverage please make sure that your leverage is not very high do not use exorbitant uh, leverage for your trades because it's going to be a very very volatile uh, few weeks coming in before the debt ceiling uh, decision comes so please do not leverage always put stop losses in your trades do not uh, take a huge risk on your trade this is something which is very very important guys because you never know what can happen at the end of the day markets are always volatile and uh, it can it can be in, go in either direction right so uh, let's continue to uh, you know look more into uh, utility names and uh, utility stocks because at the end of the day it's 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 really important to have a portfolio uh, where you can invest into long term because that is also something which is really and once this is once this happens i think uh, we have to look forward to uh, investing for the future also but then before that we have to go through this process where the debt limit is finally decided and raised so there will be a lot of other etfs also which you can see um, the dividend based funds uh, the consumer staples basically so all of those etfs i think will make a lot of sense just be on the more, less volatile sector i think that is really really important um, somebody just asked a question should we just uh, buy bitcoin and cryptos so interestingly i, I was actually <laughs> reading about this and there were a lot of articles about how since dollar is going to lose the value if the us gets defaulted um, will it be wise to just put money in cryptos so the problem is that crypto is highly speculative and when the inflation increased in 2021 mid and 2022 we saw a, a lot of a decline in the stock market and that time the stocks and cryptos both went down so everybody thought that you know cryptos are the safe haven and when something like this happens when the world will get destroyed cryptos will go up but it did not happen when the stock market crashed last year so in in fact opposite happened stocks and cryptos went down together so i don't think it's uh, at this point of time it's very difficult to say whether cryptos will prove any metal during uh, this thing because there, there is no historical record of uh, you know uh, cryptos and these crises being correlated i think it's a very it's up to individual discretion if you want to take that chance and uh, invest into bitcoins over dollar i would s- still say that it's a very high risk area yes there have been a lot of uh, discussions over uh, you know investing in cryptos over uh, dollar due if the us government gets defaulted and i think um, a lot of people have uh, yes and no arguments against that but i would leave like i would leave this to an individual risk appetite if you have that sort of risk appetite if you are ready to lose money which you are putting and when i say lose it doesn't mean that you're going to put money and lose it i'm just saying if you have that mindset and if you want to do it invest only that money which you are ready to lose if if something goes bad because bitcoin and cryptos are a very volatile uh, instruments and uh, uh, something like this i would still bet my money on commodities and utility stocks rather than cryptos so uh be informed about it read more about it uh, talk to your risk consultants talk to your risk managers about these sectors what we have discussed today and uh, i think that should be that should be the right way to do it talk to your financial advisors talk to your risk experts do not take too much risk um do not take too much leverage that is really really important All right there is another question here how certain you are that the debt ceiling will be raised so again i mean nobody can say anything with surety but then uh, i i try to put probabilities over here and as we have seen historically not once the us government has been defaulted 
and uh, but the debt ceiling has been raised almost 70 to 80 times in 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 last few years so i think that is one of the most important things because if if that's the case uh, i i would still be more inclined towards taking my investment decisions in case of the debt ceiling when it is raised right so i think that is the only reason i'm just relying on historical analysis here and historically we have seen that every time these discussions happen and when the debt ceiling is reached the limit is raised every single time so i think that's what is going to happen also but then we should be ready for the worst case scenario and that's why we are doing this session okay are you available for a one on one session yeah yeah we are definitely available for a one on one session if you want to come for a one on one meeting talk to a financial consultant over here we are all ears we provide a lot of platforms we provide a lot of financial instruments we provide a lot of strategies uh, you know you can work with if you want to invest in bonds if you want to invest in commodity based funds we have a huge library of all those asset classes and uh, if you're if you're willing to uh, be a part of it we can definitely uh you know sit and discuss further and as i said as i said that this this is more of a informative session it's it's not a recommendation or a trade recommendation it's more about uh you know where the economy looks like it's going and what you should do to protect yourself uh, but please discuss it with your risk managers before you take any investment decision right so once again guys thank you so much for uh, joining this session and we do these webinars every week if if you like this please go to google reviews century financial share your feedback with us and this only motivates us to improve work further on these sessions and next week will will be there with another session with a different um, portfolios and while we are here uh, please continue to read more about debt ceiling please continue to be more updated with the markets and uh, what goes around and that will help you to take even more uh, rational decisions right so we'll meet you next week guys thank you so much once again uh, my name is yogesh and uh, we'll meet next week with a different topic till then you have a good night we'll see you